owned and operated. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. after nine o'clock beautiful tuesday morning a good day to go out in the garden especially right now before it gets really hot caroline bolden is here to give you some advice on what you might do once you're out there and uh, if you would like to speak to caroline the number is 352-622-9622 caroline is here to answer your questions live call early get the full answer That's not the right. yes or no that you have to get at the end right, right? yeah don't get the hurry up Come on. Get, get the stuff if i even have to do a little research so we can get the answer. Good morning, Larry. That's How right. are you? Yeah, and that's part of it too, yeah. right? There's, there's always research necessary. There's always, or, or a lot of times it comes off the, you know, top of the head. But yeah, you know, sometimes, yeah, you know, sometimes somebody throws me one that's you know, yeah, might yeah. be one I need to look up. But uh, yeah, we try to do it. We try to do it fast. I'm always good at that multitasking with the laptop. So yeah, you know, when everybody says you know, you you decline, you know, the the thought of you being a pro at what you do. You've got three monitors there. How many? You've got a board and the rest of it. And I can barely talk and and look <laughs> something up. Yeah. Let, <laughs> so, me, let me ask you. So I was thinking about yeah. this the other day. Doctors yeah. for in the old days used to be one doctor knew everything. Now right. everybody's a specialist. Is, right. is the same thing true with what you do? Is, are there specialists in dandelions, for example? Uh, there's, <laughs> well, actually, there are when you talk about research. Uh-huh. You, know, you have people who do research in turf. You know that so they do everything guy. that does, but that's in your research end. But I mean, on your on your other stuff of general knowledge, like a master gardener, most of the time we're just ours is general knowledge uh-huh. for the homeowner. Many people have specialties that it's just because it's a great interest of their own. You know, I know a lot of people who like that just like to get into daylilies. That's what they like to collect. Right, right, right. You'll find nurseries that are all daylilies because they get into the breeding part of it, and and that um, same thing with citrus or other fruit right, trees. Right, right. And um, uh, that's why there's rosarians and rose clubs and African violet clubs and things like that. So they're well, like yeah, Bob Wines specialties. Obviously, has expertise Theirs is in camellias, in, especially. It's right, of course right. that's part of their name, mm-hmm. so it makes seems well, like it's that way. Yeah, that's yeah. where that's where. And you have a listener there. who has called in not lately, but he was a rose guy. He would always do roses. Yeah, who did roses, and of course we also had amaryllis. Um, uh uh-huh. um, I think it was was it Lauren? It was into the amaryllis a lot. I don't remember. Yeah. But yeah, because uh, a, a friend of hers or another, yeah, you know, that there's somebody who does a lot of the amaryllis. They come out to the festival and things like mm-hmm, that. So mm-hmm. you know, you do have specialties in that, like you say, the doctors, so do builders, so do you know, um, lands the landscapers. I was gonna say most of those will do both your hardscape and your, you know, your your shrubs and things like that. But they don't normally. I mean, unless you're unless you're paying for, do your annual beds unless you're looking for. That you know, they they probably prefer doing the big here. We'll mm-hmm, do that mm-hmm. whole hedge row, but you know, to have to sit there and put all the little individual plants in, it's yeah, that's the tedious. Part. Uh, the phone line is open if you want to call in six two two nine six two two. Let me make sure I have the right screen on here. That looks yeah, like the wrong be. screen. Who knows? Right there. But um, here it is. Yeah, we got the, and we at least we got our phone number back again still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah and good. if anybody you know, and I should have put it on. I should have put it on the in the garden page. It rained at my house last night. Nanny, nanny, nanny. <laughs> So, and it was a good rain too. It and it did suddenly, at Robbins. And it did at Robbins. And a couple other people I know. Some people says, "Yeah, I got maybe five or ten minutes." Mine was a real good rain.
brain, a nice soaking um, probably hour, hour and a half. It's like, oh, I feel blessed. Um, you know, it did get a little muggy after that, but hey, that's that's Florida. I'd rather have uh, where it dropped the temperature from 97 degrees down to 88 in about a 15-minute period. And because it was late in the afternoon, it actually stayed a little cooler uh you know, and, and things like that for the, you know, for the rest of the evening. But um, if you were lucky enough to get rain, good for you. And let's let's hope that this is uh, the beginning of a continuation mm-hmm. and that we're coming into our rainy season. If not, keep doing the rain dance. It'll get to you. You know, there have been. So I have um, two plants to report on. Mm-hmm. The apple tree seems to be doing pretty good. Good. The peace lily doing okay. pretty good. Okay, good. We took good. it out of that little pot, put, got okay. some pot, potting soil from okay. Lowe's, put right. it into a, a clay it, pot. Okay. It's doing pretty good. There you go. So, See, well, it'll be happy. Well, I don't even know what I'm doing. but No, but that's, you know, they're not that hard. Puts a miracle whip in, I mean, a miracle, miracle grow. Whip, a little miracle, no, not miracle whip. <laughs> miracle, <laughs> miracle grow. Right? It's called miracle grow, right? right? Yeah, right. yeah. But now you're... you're Potting mix had fertilizer in it, so lay off of that stuff for a bit. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so don't, that's... don't overdo it. That's the only thing. People forget that um, most all of your potting mixes, I would probably say 99% of them, and even your garden soils, all contain fertilizer nowadays. It's hard to find one that does not. Um Unless you're just looking at plain compost for the landscape. But, you know, for your potted plants and things like that, they're all going to have, uh, whether or not it's Miracle Go brand, so it has their stuff in it, or, you know, uh, whomever else's, you know, variety. They all have some. some calls coming in, and right. uh, we'll take one at a time. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning, Carol Ann and Larry. Morning. I watched that, that cloud, that rain cloud, come from the east. <laughs> it overhead by me, had about five drops on my driveway, and I watched it go towards your your side of town and stop and rain. So yeah. uh, I, I, I was just glad for the clouds to break up the, the heat and the sun, but I wish I would have got a little because we got, we got absolutely nothing here. Wow. <laughs> Wow, yeah. It was a good rain. Like I said, let's hope that this is the beginning of, you know, breaking of that, whatever that high pressure system was that was holding the water, holding the moisture away from us. I mean, it was nice to have the lower humidity, but yeah. boy, are we, boy, are we dry. And, and it must have done a li- at least some here because the grass here under the horses at, at the paddock mall is much greener than it had been because I, I, I guess there's irrigation here, but... It doesn't always. Sometimes when it's dry, it even looks it looks a little crunchy even there. Yeah, yeah. You can certainly tell who's got uh, irrigation systems and uh, oh, who yeah. does it on our side of town, anyways. But, but you know, the, but the funny thing about it is, once we get uh, some rain, all the grasses uh, green up and look the same. You know, man, yes, they do. The, yes, they do. The grass, and of course, like and we've talked about it before, especially if we're getting the if we're getting the lightning and things like that, that the ionization that occurs during that uh, electrical storm just just sort of just bolsters the the whole landscape but the the rain itself contains nutrients you know rain is is well they, you know, it was rain is life you look at a desert area or a place that you know gets very little rain when they yeah, get their yeah. rain next thing you know whatever green life <clears throat> comes to life um so it's it is a lot different than pulling the water out of the ground and spraying it it, it just doesn't have the same effect I, for the first time, uh, this, I, I stopped and I bought a watermelon along the highway. Uh-huh. Uh, the farm is selling watermelon. Yep. And uh, two for five bucks, you can't go wrong. Nope. The question I have is, is some watermelons look like basketballs and some look like large footballs. Right. What is the difference? What's the difference? It's the variety. Um, Usually the big, long ones, I mean, and there's so many different names of them anymore, but um, the big, long ones are usually like the Charleston Grays um, is what I've always known those ones. And and those are going to feed a crowd. Yeah, that makes it easy, easy slicing and and sectioning up if you're going to have a big party. Now, if you're trying to fit a a watermelon in the fridge, you're looking for more of like the round ones. Uh, And and I always, I don't know why the sugar baby comes into name, but that's because that's probably one I've grown. That's more of a bush one for the homeowner. But yeah, the round basketball size ones, they're going to fit in the fridge a little better. Um, 
you know, and that, and I think that's probably why they were bred. Normally, I want to say the round ones are more than likely to be your seedless varieties versus the long ones. Though there probably are seedless uh, big long ones too. Yeah, I, I often wondered how the heck can you get a watermelon not to have seeds? Um, it's just the the. It, the breeding on them uh, is that you you know you breed down to that if you've got a watermelon that's got very few seeds when it's ripe, um, you take the seeds from that one and continue, uh, and then but then they do have to use a pollinator plant because it doesn't have as much um, you know it's you got to have the female and male enough of them in there to actually produce. Uh, it, it's quite a process. It's actually quite scientific in order to uh, to get that outcome. But it is. I have gotten spoiled over the seedless watermelon, so. Yeah. Now, this is prime time for uh, Florida uh, watermelons, right? Uh, June, um, July? It's, yeah, it should be. And, and actually, I had one, I think, that's come uh, came from Georgia. Um, so we're all with, you know, us in Georgia are probably within that similar uh, range because, you know, how many people are, are buying fresh produce. I said, my, my fridge is just full of fresh produce right now just because it's that time of year. Uh, that you can get so much of it, and it's most of it being local. Yeah, it, it, it takes one year for a watermelon to grow. It's only one one uh, year, uh, one time a year that it, it, you know they, they, they sell them, right? Um, actually, watermelon in Florida can be a two season uh, crop. It can be that that. One for the early summer part that, you know, our watermelons are usually coming, you know, here on the East Coast at least up, you know, like you say, that May, because um, watermelons have been in the store since about May, uh, Florida ones. So you got your May and June, probably into July, uh, watermelons from Florida. And then you can, they can replant and have a later crop as well. Oh. So, yeah, I, they, they can, I, I, they can I, do more than one. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a watermelon farm in this area. So what, where in the state are they really growing a lot? Oh, there's gro a lot grown he around central Florida here. There's quite a bit of them grown uh, out, I want to say, out towards Dunellen there always was. There was some actually right around um, South Ocala, Bellevue area that, you know, you just have to get, you know, you're off the beaten path, you know, not, not necessarily right on the main road. Is yeah. where you'll find uh, it. Is, yeah. is the muskmelon a local product too? Um, you know what? I'm not. I'm not sure on that. I guess we do grow some. Yeah. I mean, or, or enough of them that you know that it makes a, you know that you got a Florida crop because we can grow we can grow almost all that stuff. There's only a few crops that we really don't do well at. Um, and that's and that's going to be your, you know your rhubarb and I mean we even, we do grow and they grow it commercially even is um, asparagus which asparagus doesn't really do that great here because of the lack of a winter um, rhubarb doesn't do well I'm trying to think of the other one that we don't do too well on. Um, it's not coming to me off the top of my head, but I mean, because in the in the fall and winter months, you know, we're growing cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower, onions, potatoes. We grow all of that stuff too. Just as you think of those as being a spring uh, or you know spring crop up north, they're a winter crop for us. And here in the summer months, uh, you know, we started our our melons and tomatoes and peppers, eggplant, all that stuff in March. Um, it'll come through getting a bulkier harvest coming on now and they can replant um, shortly thereafter I would say they probably clean the fields up a little bit and they could replant again to get a nice fall harvest um, if they start I'd say probably mid-August yeah if you buy a watermelon and uh, if you don't hit right away will it ripen more Will it ripen more? Actually, it'll. It probably will, but it's going to start to go past its prime. It wouldn't be something you would hold on to. It's not like a hard-shelled squash. It's you know, even though it seems to be like you know, like that, like it's a hard, like a hard-shelled type squash. Those are definitely a fresh melon. Um, but you can keep them for you know you can keep them for several days. Just keep them cool, keep them shaded. They really once they're harvested, don't want to sit outside in the sun. Uh, you want to keep them cooler if you can. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't necessarily refrigerate it until I'm ready to cut it 
or I'm going to be, you know, just again that quality of the the fruit inside, the flesh inside. Yeah, I, I know you were saying the previous program about watermelon. One of the things to look for is the weight, and I couldn't believe I, I bought two of these uh, basketball type uh, mm -hmm. the other day, and were they heavy? I, I, I don't know what they weigh, but I couldn't believe how heavy they were. Oh yeah, yeah that yeah that's how, one of the ways that you're looking for to to select a good melon is that it is heavy for its size. That means it's got you know good water content, uh, nice and juicy. Also, you're looking for that yellow side where it sat on the ground, uh, right. and and that that nice butter yellow you know there. And if that's nice and large, it means it sat in that location for a while, and that the that the green part of it isn't shiny. You kind of want that to be a dull color, and um, you know, so so that's that's kind of what you're looking for. The thump thing, I've never been able to to get yeah. that one figured out. But I go I go by the color on the bottom um, and the uh, you know and the dull green to the top. It, you know, it's funny. Uh, last week I, when I was shopping, I, I walked by a, a, a bin, bin full of watermelons, and this lady was in there. And I kid you not, she was thumping on every melon in there. And I don't know, she maybe she knows more than I do or you do, but she was she wanted a certain sound for for, for for a melon to buy. Yeah, she's exactly when when you can look at the bottom, and that's it. Some people can do that thump thing. I can sit there and tap on it. Oh, whatever, just let me look at the bottom of them and see that good yellow and. And even then, once they start coming from out of state or too far, they're, the chance of them being really good, I think, starts to decline. I had at least that's that's the experience I I've had, uh, and that you know maybe I've just been bad at selecting them once the season gets going. Um, but once they start coming too far from out of state, I I yeah. seem to find them that aren't quite ripe. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's disappointing. Well, I, when I when I stopped and picked up those melons, I talked to the farmer real quickly, and he said he had just picked those melons uh, not just soon, not not too long ago, so they were fresh. Right, right, and that's yeah. And if you can get them, especially if they're coming from you know, if there's a field nearby, or say they they say you know, hey, listen, I'm all, I'm like 20 miles from here. I just got to bring them this close to get them to market. Yeah, you know, go. Yeah, oh yeah, fantastic. Even you know the the farmers markets, uh, you know downtown, probably even the flea markets. You're going to get some good local watermelons, all your fruit and things like that should be uh, fantastically fresh and local right now. Yeah. Well, what watermelon grows on a vine? Is it one, one watermelon per vine? Oh, no, no. They can get more than one off a vine. Okay. Yeah, that's got, well, yeah. thank you very much. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah. uh, I love the local watermelons. And, uh, I'm gonna have a, I think I'm going to have a little bit of breakfast right now. There you go. There yeah. you go. Thank you, Sheriff. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. All, right. Yeah. All right. They had another phone call coming yep. in, but just okay. wanna, uh, if you, if you, just if you want to call in, uh, sure. the number six two two nine six two two. Also, um, Caroline has a Facebook page. If you want to show a photograph of something that you're talking about, uh, you can refer to the uh, to the in the garden Facebook uh, group. Right. We call group. it a group, That's right? It. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right. Let's take this call. Okay, Good on. morning. Yeah. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with Caroline. Uh, good morning, <clears throat> Sonny Coy. Yeah. I have a question about some plants. Uh, can we grow lilac bushes here? No, we cannot. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's, that's again, that's one of those trees or shrubs that um, it needs a winter time. Right. And we just don't have it. That's why a lot of times people will plant the crepe myrtle just because of the shape of the flower, not the fragrance, obviously, but, you know, the, the look of the flower. um for that right the other one was uh how about like a we up north we call them snowball bushes i guess i think they're high hydrangea hydrangea yes we can grow hydrangea here they can be a little they can be uh, uh, me say it, a little picky they can be kind of picky initially trying to get them established they like filtered light um mm -hmm. enough water you know they don't don't put them out in the sun they will burn in a hurry um and it can take like two years to really get them going. But once you've got them in a good spot, they're just, they'll just bloom like crazy without a whole lot of care. Well, anyway, that's, uh, that's basically what I, uh, the questions I had for yeah. growing uh, these two types of plants. Yeah. We had the lilacs up 
uh, on Long Island where I lived, and uh, they were beautiful, and uh, they just kept blooming and blooming every sure, year. Sure, sure. But anyway, uh, the high granger was another one that mm -hmm. uh, we call them snowball bushes, and uh, they grew on the side of the house, and they were in full sun, though. Yeah, but here, full sun, it, you know, our, our summer months, the intensity of that sun is yes. just way, <laughs> way different than a lot of stuff that, yeah, I, I talk, well, obviously just with my employment i talked to a lot of people that are come from other places and they said well we planted this here and mine the one i planted is dying and go, yeah i'll get it in a little more shade especially mm -hmm. in the afternoon but the hydrangeas definitely are they can tolerate uh some morning sun but it, you're talking that early morning and then the rest of the day it really needs to be filtered light you know in and out from in the trees uh kind of thing or just a big bright area all right. Thank you very much. You're and, welcome, uh, sir. Have a great day. And yep. uh, I understand we uh, had we were very warm yesterday. I understand it was either 99 or we it was were close it was to right there by 100. I know that in a lot of areas. So probably fluctuated up there at 100. You know, 99, 101, uh, back and forth probably. Well, I know it was on the news, uh, the local uh, TV news. That Gainesville hit 100. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, anyway, yep. thank, thanks a lot for everything you, and, uh, you do, and thank you, WOCA, for having Carolyn on the air, and uh, we learn an awful lot. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. Now. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, it's 82 right now. It's 82, yeah. <laughs> it started out a little warm today. But here on Watermelon, just to bring it up, n nutritional facts, and I'm trying to find out what they're saying survey, serving size is because I mean it depends to some people a serving size is just one wedge of watermelon to others it's a half a watermelon <laughs> right, right, uh, right, right. but it's only like 85 calories to a serving there's no fat obviously there's no cholesterol there's uh, three milligram mg you know sodium potassium though 314 milligrams carbohydrates there's you know because it's natural sugars are 21 grams but it's nothing added so it's good the, stuff the, yeah. uh, the thing they always <clears throat> Attached to watermelon is lycopene. Does it give you that number? The lycopene? No, actually, it no? does it not on here. But uh, vitamin A, thirty-one percent of the vitamin A you need. So that's uh, wow, that's that's, pretty that's good. a lot. There's actually even two percent calcium, uh, thirty-seven percent of your vitamin C, three percent iron. It's got good B six. It's got five percent and magnesium seven percent. So it's really it's one of those things, and it is so cooling. And so refreshing when you have it. I actually have a watermelon on my counter and part of one in my fridge, which I got to see if the one in the fridge has passed its. Uh, it's like I got like the last, not quite a right, quarter right, of right. it left, kind of thing, because it's hard to eat a whole watermelon. So, did you ever have, did you have a slice of watermelon, put the slices in the refrigerator, and maybe the setting on the refrigerator is not quite the way it should be, and they freeze? Yeah, I've had the, yeah. And, and I, they get, they're good. They get, yeah. I like them like I that. Wanna, I want to see whether or not, I got to find out. I don't know that I want to well. freeze them solid like in the freezer. Right, but, but just uh, just a little icy bit. They're or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. just a little bit. I want to see whether or not if you if you freeze them in the freezer, can you turn it? Because I've seen like a recipe for a, a watermelon margarita. Oh, really? <laughs> kind of thing, and I go, yeah. Can you actually do that? And not have the watermelon turn to to mush. Oh, okay. Yeah, you because know, okay. you can't really you can't freeze like oranges and have it come out and be good you can freeze the juice oh okay, okay but not the fruit um same thing with like say tomatoes you know you can take and and peel and dice your tomatoes but you're not going to use them necessarily as a fresh vegetable fruit after that you're going to use it in your soups and things like uh -huh. that and and stuff so um but i gotta try it with the watermelon and just see what happens Carly, we're about a minute away from the break. Do you have something to give away? We to do them? have. We do have. We've got two tickets to uh, Ocala Civic Theaters live on stage, The Adams Family, a musical. So, and I, my understanding is it's been quite a fun play, uh, a, you know, funny and, and just a fun play. So, anybody liking The Adams Family, um, I don't think I saw anything that would make it to where it wouldn't be for the whole family. 
No, I think Robin and her mom enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. So if you want two tickets, you call during the break, which is happening right now. The number is 622-9622. We'll pick one caller, and that one caller will win the two tickets. If we And and, and a Bob Wines gift certificate. Oh, okay. Bob Wines as well. So a nice little package of prizes. If you do not, if we do not answer the phone, that means somebody else won the prize. Deal? There you go. We'll be right back. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. News. I'm Chris Foster. There are crews going door to door checking tornado damaged homes in Indiana and Ohio. Nan Whaley is the mayor of Dayton, Ohio. I've already heard many stories of neighbors checking on neighbors and helping out where necessary. Please continue to look out for your neighbors, particularly anyone elderly or vulnerable as crews assess this damage. There are reports of minor injuries, but nobody killed. Tens of thousands of homes and businesses are without power. A man and an 11-year-old girl are killed in a stabbing attack at an elementary school bus stop in Kawasaki, Japan. The attacker, with a knife in each hand, wounded 16 other people, mostly girls. He killed himself as police arrived. President Trump in Japan at the time says... All Americans stand with the people of Japan and grieve for the victims and for their families. The president's on his way back to Washington now. That trip included meetings with Japan's new emperor, Naruhito, and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. This is Fox News. Pros know doing it right means having what you need for any job on hand. So you're spending more time on the job site than away from it. Lowe's does it right by stocking job lot quantities of treated lumber, fencing, and decking. And at the right prices. Get volume savings on your next job at the Pro Desk. And save time by ordering at Lowe'sForPros.com. Have your order delivered or pick up in store. Our dedicated pro loaders will load you up and get you back to the job site where you belong. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. See Pro Desk for details, U.S. only. I'm Sarah Wallace, General Manager at Magnolia Bakery. Every cake has the backstory of who you're giving this cake to. It's happy birthday, Jessica, or happy sweet 16, Amy, and wanting Amy to have the best sweet 16 that she could ever have. I'm working for a sweeter world, one treat at a time. At ADP, we're designing a better way to work so you can achieve what you're working for. HR, talent, time, benefits, and payroll. Informed by data and designed for people. Learn more at design.adp.com. Here is your one-minute news brief. Prosecutors will ask Judge Elizabeth Shearer today for mental health and medical records of the former student charged with last year's Florida school massacre in Parkland, Florida. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a memorandum of agreement between Space Florida and the Israel Space Agency during a four-day trade mission to help boost the state's economy. Authorities say a dump truck hit a sports utility vehicle before crashing into a recording studio owned by Gloria and Emilio Estefan in Miami. Two teens who recently graduated from Southeast High School in Bradenton have died in a crash while traveling in Peru. The U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Valiant has returned to its home port at Naval Station Mayport after a nine-week counter-drug patrol in the Eastern Pacific. A North Florida mailman is being honored for spending his Sundays cleaning veterans' headstones, and Bush Gardens Tampa Bay is offering free admission for veterans and three guests through July 15th. And that is your news brief from The Source. Our hot, dry weather will continue through the heart of the week here with sunshine on this Tuesday. It'll be hot this afternoon, up to 91 at the coast and 98 inland. Mainly clear to tonight, lows in the mid to upper 60s inland, low 70s along the coast. For Wednesday, mostly sunny and hot with a high of 90 in the coast, 98 inland. And about the same Thursday, sunshine, a few clouds and hot with a high of 90 at the coast, 97 inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. summertime. It takes you back, doesn't it? Makes you think and remember. What did you do in the summertime when you were a kid? At Palm Garden of Ocala, we see folks who are young at heart, but their bodies are giving them a tough time. Our goal for every guest we serve is to bring them to their highest level of independence. Come visit us soon. We're located on the corner of Southwest 27th Avenue and 34th Street. And when you're in the hospital, ask for Palm Garden by name. 
Ocala Business Leaders Incorporated is a group of independent local firms providing a wide range of quality goods and services. Each firm strives to maintain the highest level of professional integrity and 100% customer satisfaction. When you're looking for goods and services, call a member of the Ocala Business Leaders and we are confident you will be pleased with the results. If you are interested in becoming a member of the Ocala Business Leaders, join us at the Ocala Elks Lodge, 25th Avenue in Ocala, any Wednesday at 7 a.m. and enjoy a breakfast on us. For more information, check OcalaBusinessLeaders.com. Ask yourself, what do you pay for health care? Are you single? Do you pay more than $199 a month? Are you a couple? Do you pay more than $249 a month? Do you have a family? Do you pay more than $529 a month? Yes, you can serve the entire family with health care for only $529 a month. Sign up at any time of the year, pick your own doctor and hospital, ask any questions in our live chat box. It takes two minutes to find out how to save. Go to lightyourliberty.com. That's lightyourliberty.com. The College of Central Florida is committed to being your first choice for quality higher education. CF has locations in Marion Citrus and Levy counties and offers more than 60 academic programs. Earn a certificate, associate or bachelor's degree with Florida's 2 plus 2 program. A student can complete an associate in arts at CF and be guaranteed admission to a state of Florida university. CF is ranked number 13 in the U.S. for affordability, is military friendly and offers a full student life experience. Make CF your first choice. Call 352-873-5800. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock, let's return to In the Garden with Carol Ann Baldwin. The phone number to call if you'd like to speak to Carol Ann is 622-9622. And don't forget, there is a Facebook group called In the Garden. Mm-hmm. You just go to that one and make sure it's not the one in Sanibel Island. I believe that's the only other one on there. Yeah, I think so. Similar yeah. name, but I right. think they're a business. Well, yours is, I think it's Could a be. nursery or yeah, something, right? Yeah, I believe right? they are. Yeah. I, yeah, I think they are. Uh, so then you'll find it and you'll be part of the group. And, and mine says Ocala on it when you look at it. The other one says Sanibel or, or Sarasota, wherever it is. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was Sarasota. <clears throat> yeah. Now I can't remember. Somewhere. But one of the S ones over there. 82 degrees, by the way, right now. Just yeah. saying. It's a warm one out there. Stay hydrated if you have to be outside, <clears throat> you know, gardening this time of year. And we say it every year. You know, do it early morning, late in the afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um doing anything for the landscape you know if you need to treat for pests and everything else again that whole thing early early morning late in the afternoon if we're gonna start which should usually our rainy season does start somewhere early uh, early to mid-june um so if you got you know any you want to do things early because the rains normally come in the afternoon you know it gets we start out okay in the morning it gets hot boom right, it rains right, right. cools it down a little bit and then it becomes swampy and that you know but it can wash your stuff away if you try to put it down in the afternoon or you could always try to wait till after a rainstorm but you know fertilizers and things like that usually you're wanting to water in lightly um not you know have them wash away if you haven't fertilized your lawn for the last one of the spring season, do so here this week. Um, it's getting too hot for it also. You know, I mean, well, it's been probably too hot, really. But if you can get it down, um, there's a lot of fertilizer bans in our state or ordinances or recommendations to not use nitrogen-based fertilizers during the rainy season, mm-hmm. which is June through September. Um you know, let's let's all be good stewards and not be part of the problem of the algae blooms, and resist putting down those <clears throat> turf builder fertilizers that are 38% nitrogen and only 17% of it is is slow release. You know, stay away from them for the summertime. Good advice. Yeah. You have a phone call. Great. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. Morning. I have a partial bag of fertilizer left over. Probably from last year. Okay. It's probably from Seminole mm-hmm. brand. Um, 10, 10, 10. And it's kind of, I left it in, in the shed on, okay. the, on the wooden floor, and I can see a wet spot. So mm-hmm. is that fertilizer still safe to use? Yeah. Yeah, it, is it should be. Is it going through some kind of process? <laughs> um, I mean, they can begin to release the nitrogen and things like that. Like that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so you're not going to put it on heavy uh, with anything. Just you sort of break it up if it's got some lumps in there before you get started so that it's sort of mixed all the way through. But being it's only about a year old, usually that's not a big deal. And if it's just like a like a simple 10-10-10, um, you don't have the added you know, herbicide 
pesticides or anything like that that could be uh, causing some problems with a with okay. a chemical reaction. You know, just if you're needing to fertilize, go ahead and get that done. Uh, get that done now. Is that safe to put on your yard? Just ten, ten, ten. No. It's not labeled no. for use on a lawn uh, because we've taken the phosphates, that's the center number, out because of pollution problems. We mine the phosphates, okay. our lawns don't need it. All right. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, things like things like ten 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 fertilizers can be used in the landscape, your shrubs, your things like that, vegetable gardens and all of that. <clears throat> so if your veggie garden's going, it's needing another little boost of fertilizer, you could always throw that in there. Um, and your flower beds and things like that, too, shrub beds. And those, too, when you're talking, when I'm talking about fertilizer, I mean all of these things that, you know, on our fertilizers to sort of get that done now. Uh, we're coming into the hotter part of the year. Once June and July hits, we sort of treat that almost like a winter time for us that we can't do much out in the garden. Hmm. It's it's too hot. Plants aren't going to grow. They're not going to fruit. They're not going to do. So we can solarize. We can, um, you know, just clean up mean? those Sol- beds. Solar. Solarize is, you know, prepare the bed for the next year. Cover it with the clear, ah, okay. like the six mil plastic, uh, and let the soil come up to a temperature that'll kill off microbes and, and some weed seed and things like that, making the garden, you know, a, a little more of a... Um, a little more of a, say, an organic method of preparing and eliminating some of those issues to try to keep them from being an issue the following planting season. Today is National Hamburger Day. I, I heard that. Now, you know what? I really kind of thought that the number one was <laughs> going to be the backyard grill. Home. Oh, yeah, the home, yeah. The yeah. home, the backyard, well, yeah. Because, see, now, when I was a kid, it was always like, you could go out for a burger, but you didn't normally, it was... You know you, what? You went for, that ma- should have been a choice. Mama's homemade burgers were always <laughs> the best, you know. That, that <laughs> no, was, you're right. And, it, you know, it's a mama burger. Even I called mine when, when my daughter was... No, you're you know, right, you're it's right. Ma- mom burgers, because you could get what you wanted on them. But, and, let me ask you this, yeah. that what you just said... Yeah. You can get what you want on them. Yeah. So it's what you want on them that makes it the better burger. And and I just think sometimes right? it is the size of the burger. Oh yeah. The, the bun that you that you like, you know, um, the thickness of the slice of tomato or the slice of the onion, the amount of pickles on it. I actually, how much you you know that if you sit there and I and I've watched my daughter and grandson <laughs> when my daughter was little, she'd sit and make a smiley face on the bun. That's how I want my mustard. On it, you know, and that's funny. And you you want a one on your burger? You can have a one on your burger. You, you know, and and so would just, you if you had a choice to have all the fixins but not the burger, or the burger with not, no fixins at all, wh- which would you prefer? If you, I'd rather have. The, the 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 lettuce, the tomatoes, the onions. I, the I can do so if the burger, if the meat, if the burger's cooked nicely yeah. and it's on a plain old bun with lettuce and tomato <laughs> and and ketchup and you know, I I I want a good burger. That meat better taste good. You have to have good. the burger part of it. The, okay. the burger better taste good. <laughs> but if I'm having all of my fixings, the burger can be smaller because then I got all the. Yeah, it's like a salad that's how I on it. You know, that's how like, I feel. It's like having a sub out. You get yeah. all the other stuff in there. <laughs> but no, I mean, my mom even used to make them. She'd do them in the <clears> oven <throat> to fit like a big uh, sub roll. So they'd be long oh, and rectangular, yeah, 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 and it yeah, was yeah. yeah. She'd have to do them in the broiler in the oven in order to be able to gotcha. turn that right, thing over, right. and then you got a, you got cut a section of it. <laughs> it was just something different, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you know, at home, you know. So I think home, I agree. With I, you. I'm not going to go out and spend twelve dollars for a hamburger. How come? Why not? I, I just don't think a burger's. I'm, if I'm going to spend twelve or more dollars for a meal, rather, it's going to be a different meal. Yeah. Well, see, so yesterday on Memorial Day, right? I said, you know, everybody's talking about a hot dog. I feel like going getting a hot dog, and we were talking about it on the air, right? And everybody gave us ideas of where to go. Okay. And so we went to one of them without uh, advertising. Actually, we can advertise them. I think. Oh. Wait, wait. Is that a sponsor? Where do we go? We went to Freddy's, and they they are. Oh, a sponsor, okay. Oh, yeah. So we can name them. Oh, okay. That's where we went. Well, how were the hot dogs? They were good. Yeah? They were good, yeah. And, and uh, usually you go there for burgers, right? Right, yeah. I've never gone out for a hot dog. I mean, unless you're at the beach or at a, you know, where hot dogs always taste their best is at festivals and things like that, you know. Really? In yeah. New Jersey, did you go to Nathan's or was there not a Nathan's over there? I don't there? remember. I, yeah, I left New Jersey when I was 16. Uh, okay. so, 16? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's old enough. 
I didn't drive yet. So, no, oh, you, you didn't know. find a. I no, yeah, I mean somewhere. you had to be you had to be seventeen, I think, to get a learner's <laughs> permit. But um, no, you know, now doing hot dogs, and I saw a nifty gizmo, and I know this has nothing to do with gardening, but it is the outdoor time of year. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I actually a few years ago, I'd seen something on on Facebook or Pinterest or something like that, where you take your hot dogs, and they said do it with a skewer. Use your bare hands. It's easier. Just keep your fingers out of the way. <laughs> and you take and you roll the hot dogs and you cut just a groove all the way, like spiraling. It. Really? But you're just cutting through the, the skin okay. on the hot dog. Okay. And then when you grill it, all those little edges get crispy. Ooh. And it holds your good. condiments yeah, yeah. better. It holds okay. your ketchup and mustard. But then I saw a little gizmo thing on on. I don't know where it comes from. Probably buy it on Amazon, where it's like a little tool that'll make little cross hatches all on your hot dogs for that same reason. You really? just sort of cut into it part way. Really? And it's like, yeah, that looks so. Made to where when you grill it, especially if you like your hot dogs <laughs> to be a little bit on right, the right, right. little bit on the crunchy side, it's like, yeah. Do you know what I went? I went through the pretzel bun phase. Oh, okay. Did you ever go through that phase? Or I, do you, I like, do you like, I like the pretzel I like bun? Pretzel buns, yeah. <laughs> I like pretzel buns. I also like potato buns. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, the pota- potato potato made oh, out of potatoes. Made out of potato flour. Yeah. They're oh, good. really? Okay. Oh, yeah. They're good. Huh. They kind of spoil you. <laughs> for a regular one. And then I used to go, and of course, I don't know if they still do them. The ones, what were they? Um, they called them blanket dogs. It was for, f- fully enveloped. It was like the hot dog, kind of doing like a pig's on a, in a, okay. he's in a blanket. Right, but right. it's fully done. And so you actually had to cut it open to put your condiments inside, or you dunked. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay the stuff. But okay. your hot dog was done all in, in. Like a corn dog, in a way. Kind of, but it was a regular hot, you know, uh, regular uh, baked dough, not a, not a fried. So today's hamburger day. Hamburger I, day. I prefer to call it cheeseburger day. Che- yeah, I'm a cheeseburger fan myself. <laughs> yeah, good, good cheeseburger is always good. Now I'm going to want a cheeseburger, and that's not what I brought for lunch. So. I always say, when, whenever we have this discussion about what religions don't allow, right. like your Jewish friends, I don't know if this is across the board or if it's, if, I don't know. But I remember they could have cheese mm-hmm. and they could have burgers, but they couldn't have cheeseburgers. Right. And he used right. to say, well, what happens like if you eat like within three minutes? It's both going into the same place at the same time. I, I don't know. They don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's, I, sh- I shouldn't yeah. even talk religion, right? No, that's a, yeah, that's almost stay away from yeah, even yeah, with yeah. food. Yeah. But yeah, no, good, good, good burgers always good. So now it's going to make me think of eating a burger sometime. So wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, just the uh, up north part of your okay, your yeah. past White Castle. Um, did you ever no, go there? No, you never I went mean, to White Castle. We had a we had a McDonald's about three <clears> miles from the house. But and they then, have McDonald's here. Yeah, but I'm just saying there was McDonald's. There was, uh, I mean, back in the day there was Roy Rogers, and you had Ponderosa. I don't ever remember a, a you White Castle. So I always say to the former New Yorkers anyway, right. I would say, I know there's no White Castle, but we have crystals. And that's just right. as good. The difference is you got to say ketchup, not mustard. Ah, uh, I don't know if that's true I or not. Get, yeah, I'm I fine. mean they only put I'm easy to please. On them. They only put mustard on them, so you, know. you can ask them though. You yeah. Can say. Oh yeah. With, well, with anything you can ask to vary. <laughs> or you get a pack of ketchup and you put it on yourself. <laughs> yeah. That way you get the proper quantity of it. Just you know. yeah, yeah. Are onions hard to grow? Um, no, not really. Actually, we grow onions and we, we go through this a few times, you know, different times during the year. We grow our onions, uh, the big Florida type onions, sweet onions in the in the wintertime. Oh, okay. We, we so this is ours, not a good time. Right, this is not. We probably uh, if anybody was growing them, they probably did their harvest this month back in here in May. Okay. Yeah. And you we have, got a call. Yes, you do. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning again. You morning. know, in Milwaukee, we have what they call George Webb's. Okay. And it, it's a great burger, and whenever the Milwaukee Brewers win 12 straight games, they get free burgers off for a day. Oh, cool, cool. So and, 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 uh, the Brewers did have a, a 12 game uh, winning strip, uh, <laughs> stretch uh, this last season. So, uh, of course, living down here, I was too, I was too much, it's too far of a drive for a burger. But uh, right. anyway, just, it's kind of a neat thing up there. Right. Oh, yeah. No, well, that's a, yeah, different places will do different things like that for, for seasons and things, you know, that, that they're winning. But, 
Yeah, but you know, a good burger, you got to have your lettuce and tomato and your onion, and you can grow a lot of that stuff here. Um, actually, if you would have harvested your onions, you might have been getting tomatoes off the vine. Lettuce, you might have had to buy, unless you had some in a cooler area in the yard in order to get it from not to be able to be uh, bolting and turning to a little more bitter taste. But you could have grown most of that stuff here for... Uh, for this National Hamburger Day. Right. Well, being from Milwaukee, uh, I love raw beef and rye, and uh, uh, I, I suppose in a way that kind of qualifies itself as sort of a hamburger. Right. But uh, they say you're not supposed to eat raw beef because it could kill you, but I've been eating it for, I don't know, about 60, 70 years now, and I'm still kicking, so. That's it, I yeah. I've, uh, uh, yeah, I've never had a problem having a pinch of, pinch of the raw ground beef as a mixing up for a meatloaf, and then it's even got a raw egg in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> So you can't always believe what they tell you. Nah. Anyways, uh, I, I, it's a tradition up there, and I, I, I brought it down here to Florida, and sure. people look at me when I eat it. They think I'm crazy, but uh, I've actually had a couple people that uh, enjoyed it, and now they do it on a regular basis. Oh, wow. wow. So, oh, well. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks for calling. Yeah. yeah that's it. Uh yeah, some some interesting little different things from like you said, you know, around. But like you know, I I I might have grown up in New Jersey, but it was like you, at that time you didn't go out to eat. No, I mean it was a, it was a treat. Oh yeah, to go out yeah, anywhere yeah. and and yeah, so yeah, yeah. you know we as kids about the far as you was going to make it was going to be uh-huh, you know the uh-huh. the McDonald yeah that was a treat. Was to, to take everybody take their bicycles and ride up there. I think actually closest to our house was actually a pizza joint, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and they had some of the best pizza. That was, I mean, that was a fond memory of that place. Um, yeah, that was. Okay, can we switch track? What is it that you put on your Facebook page? It was. Um, it the, was actually something that that be life that Joe had shared. Oh, okay. I believe, okay. So, so I just grabbed it and shared it over there, okay. and it's uh, you know I guess uh, over at um, Fort King. I'm trying to bring my bring the page up. Yeah, here. Fort King Environmental. But, yeah, that days. they're having. You know, I guess some summer programs. A two-hour program. Come on, in the garden. Covers page. the oh. life of pollinators and why pollinators right. are a crucial part of our ecosystem. Right. So here's something. If somebody's interested, I didn't go through the whole thing. It's Ten dollars. Uh, yeah. So that's a that's a reasonable. It's probably a nice. Uh, oh, it's a it's a children's thing. It's ages children's five thing. to fifteen. Okay. Yeah. So a good program. It's a day camp. Uh, okay. Okay. On on bees, you know. Well, this one's on this one's on the bee life, but it's uh, I, and I and I should yeah. I just I quick shared it across um, yeah, you know, just because it was kind of cool. To get the you know get kids you know the school's out. Yeah, yeah, gotta, gotta yeah, keep yeah. them busy, or yeah, they're already yeah. crying. I'm bored. It's good to go to yeah, a, it's, it's good to go to a fort, go, right? Go, go to a yeah, go go to with some of the day camps, and that's cheap, ten bucks. Yeah, you know? really, really. You know, you can go, you know, shopping ten to noon. It's two hours. You might be able to get your shopping done while you drop the kids off for a few hours. Go pick them up, hit the park, get some lunch, and uh, you know, be cooking burgers at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, right. But a, but a lot of fun. So yeah, just you know, share your stuff on to, over to the Facebook. And what did, did I have something recently? Oh, that was oh that Joe. You know, the, uh, last week he had posted on his uh, the gardening on his um, Fitbit or his watch or uh-huh, whatever uh-huh. Uh, says you know how many miles you actually walk when you're doing your weed eating, leaf blowing, and mowing. So you know, remember that gardening is good exercise though. Be careful with the heat. Uh, do stay hydrated. Um, sodas and things like that are not hydrating. Water, 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 water. Uh, you know, that's... Lots of water. It, that's lots of water. You can always put a little lemon in it or something like that if you need some refreshing. Or when you come in, then have... You know, make sure you're still having some water, but then you have have your iced tea or lemonade, something like that, that helps to refresh. And those sugars do help so to bolster you back up. What are your thoughts on the drinks that advertise... Electrolytes. The electrolytes and yeah. things like that. I, I use them. I yeah, drink them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we do, We have. But then again, when you're outside or out, you know, I mean, not, I'm not necessarily out in the sun all day, but I am outside, you know, a 40 hour week pretty much. Uh, and yeah, you've got to replenish some of that stuff at the end of the end of the day. Um, if you're outside enough and you come in and when you're, you're uh, your clothing has dried, you know, you, you've changed and showered in that and your, your clothing that you were wearing dries and has that white 
lines and things like that. That's the salts yeah. coming out of oh, your I know. body. I know. And you need to replace those. But if you're you're only out for, you know, an hour or two out in the in the yard, you can come back in and well, hopefully you're drinking water before, during and then after. Yeah. Um, you don't really have to hit up you know, the, the Gatorades and all of those kind of things. Um, and especially if you have an issue with blood pressure, they have a lot of salt in them. So do be careful with some of those. There are mm-hmm. ones out there on the market that have less sodium in it and are, are you know, operating on a different kind of basis that are refreshing. Um, you know, just don't forget if you have your own health issues to pay attention to what you're doing. You know, actually a piece of watermelon. You come in, have a piece of melon. That's going to give you... You know all kinds of electrolytes mm-hmm. and potassiums as, as well, or other melon, other fruits that are here in season. You know, just you know, have your bowl, have your bowl of fruit in the fridge ready for you for when you come back in. Yeah. And again, drink, drink plenty of water. Um, we drink water all day, and 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 not to be not to be weird or anything. You end up on a day like that that you're not. You know, you're not urinating, but at about in the middle of the night, after you've had a few more bottles of water after work and 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 some coffee or whatever, two o'clock in the morning is a good time that your body decides. Guess what? I'm done. I, I I've finished with all that liquid you drank. <laughs> so get up, get up and run. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah just one of those, just one of those funny little observations. I <laughs> uh, got a few minutes left. If you want to call in, the number is six two two nine six two two. Remember, in the garden uh, Facebook group is available. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you want to go on there, and the, the other people who are part of that group will probably uh, answer questions. Caroline mm-hmm. will answer questions. Yeah, wait, wait, I, so I will not. I'll just look at your pictures. Look at pictures and go. Well, you you may respond, you may comment, you may not answer, but you'll comment, <laughs> or you can. I might, I might, especially if they ask, "Where's Caroline?" I'll right. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I was looking at today, and this is a good time of year. People have asked, uh, and I see it on some other uh, Facebook pages and things like that. You know. Um, how to propagate or when can I graft when can I air layer Um, coming up here in June is a really good time because we've gotten past that that new growth that came on uh, you know March April May is beginning to what we call harden off and it's semi hardwood so you can get those air layerings done to where it's not it's a thin enough piece but sturdy enough that it can withstand you know the abuse you're going to do to force it to root in an unusual location so um, there are some. There is a page. Uh, what does it say? It's an Edis publication. So uh, edis.ifas.ufl uh, forwards no dot edu topic underscore garden underscore propagation. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, it's a lot. But if you just, I, I went on the uh, uh, solutions for your life, and I put in for what to do. In the garden for June, uh-huh. or, or yeah, what to do in the garden? Scroll down to June, and and there it was. So this was edis.ifas.ufl.edu, and then going through. And you have a phone call. Good okay. morning. You're on there with Caroline. Good morning. Morning. Um, you know anywhere where you can buy seeds or the plants or the what they call beach sunflowers? Oh. You know what? Year, yeah, when when Taylor when Taylor Garden was open all the time, they they she always used to carry it. Um, I'm not sure who carries it. Seed, you'd probably be looking at a native um, seed collector. So it might be going through the Native Plant Society to try to find out where you might find that. Okay, but they they would grow here. They will grow here. They grow very well here, even though we don't have any salt. You know that they don't. They really don't require it. They just will withstand it. Um, so yeah, they do fine here. Great for okay. great for a hard to mow su- sunny area. You got a you got a uh, a berm or something like that. A real steep area. You can't get a mower down or a weed whacker. Get those planted. Get them going. They will they will choke out the weeds. What did you say? The Native Plant Society. Yeah, the Native Native Plant Society, um, and there is one, I believe, within Marion County, and or Native Plant Growers. Um, let me see if I can look one up real quick. I'm not sure. Uh, plants, Native Plants. Well, I've heard it. Native I Plant Nursery. Up. Native Plant Nursery is near me. You should be able to go through. So. Um, yeah, okay. there's a, there's a few of them in this area. 
All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's that's one of those ones a lot of people wanted. It's just you're not going to find it really in the big box stores. And I don't think you're going to find seed for it there either, only because of its... I think limited in where it grows. I'm not uh-huh. sure. I'm not sure if it grows outside of Florida, or maybe it does up into Georgia, uh, and maybe even the Carolinas, but only on the beach sections, kind of thing, where the temperatures are a little bit different and the climate. So yeah, hit a, hit up a native plant. You know, native native plant nurseries, uh, and there are several of them in this loca- You know, in this area. Uh, well, stay cool out there. Do you have to work oh, today? Oh, yeah, I sure do. I actually have to leave here and head to work. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you do. Hey, uh, for those who don't pleasure. know, Caroline volunteers to do this for us each week, and uh, we appreciate it more than she realizes. I appreciate it. It gives yeah. me a like an oasis. I love it. <laughs> I love this, this uh, show. It's Th- always fun. Thank you, Caroline. You're welcome. We will take a little break and be right back. Remember, if you'd like to communicate with Caroline after she's off the air, you can do that on her Facebook page, which is In the Garden, On as it's a group. You just have to ask to be part of it, and she will say yes, and you're in. Mm -hmm. It costs you nothing. Just don't sell anything. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we'll be right back. This is The Source, W-O-C-A O'Cala. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is W-O-C-A, O'Cala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. There's a report of at least one person killed in tornadoes hitting Ohio overnight. Nan Whaley's the mayor of Dayton. We just got word that in the town of Salina, one person uh, has died, and there's been about 40 injuries in hospitals from across the region. She was on Fox News Channel. Those storms hit Indiana as well. There's damage in at least a half dozen communities with roads blocked and widespread power outages. School children and parents are stabbed in Japan. A man armed with knives and reportedly shouting, I will kill you, attacking a group of children at a bus stop in the city of Kawasaki. Police say an 11-year-old girl and a 39-year-old man were killed. There are reports another 16 children and one adult were injured. The suspect is also thought to have stabbed himself, dying after he was captured. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe <laughs> saying he's outraged <laughs> and calling the attack a harrowing incident. Fox's Simon Owen. This is Fox News. Pros know doing it right means buying in bulk to save time and save money too. Lowe's does it right by stocking job lot quantities of fence pickets, posts, and concrete every day. And at 5% savings when you buy in bulk, save time by ordering ahead at Lowe'sForPros.com. We offer job site delivery seven days a week, so save even more time by having your order delivered. For the supplies you need to give your customers a fence they'll love, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. See ProDesk for details, U.S. only. Discover's going further with Miles Rewards than we've ever gone before. Like sun on your face, book in your hand, kids playing in the sand further. Because the Discover It Miles card offers unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase and will automatically match all the miles you earn at the end of your first year. So your 35,000 miles could become 70,000. Plus no blackout dates. Just buy your ticket and use your miles to credit your statement. Get out there with your Discover It Miles card today. Limitations apply. Discover match for new card members only. Learn more at discover.com slash travel. Here is your one-minute news brief. Prosecutors will ask Judge Elizabeth Shearer today for mental health and medical records of the former student charged with last year's Florida school massacre in Parkland, Florida. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a memorandum of agreement between Space Florida and the Israel Space Agency during a four-day trade mission to help boost the state's economy. Authorities say a dump truck hit a sports utility vehicle before crashing into a recording studio owned by Gloria and Emilio Estefan in Miami. Two teens who recently graduated from Southeast High School in Bradenton have died in a crash while traveling in Peru. The U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Valiant has returned to its home port at Naval Station Mayport after a nine-week counter-drug patrol in the Eastern Pacific. A North Florida mailman is being honored for spending his Sundays cleaning veterans' headstones, and Bush Gardens Tampa Bay is offering free admission for veterans and three guests through July 15th. And that is your news brief from The Source. Our hot, dry weather will continue through the heart of the week here with sunshine on this Tuesday. It'll be hot this afternoon, up to 91 at the coast and 98 inland. Mainly clear too tonight. Lows in the mid to upper 60s inland, low 70s along the coast. For Wednesday, mostly sunny and hot with a high of 90 in the coast, 98 inland. And about the same Thursday, sunshine, a few clouds and hot with a high of 90 at the coast, 97 inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg.
summertime. It takes you back, doesn't it? Makes you think and remember? What did you do in the summertime when you were a kid? At Palm Garden of Ocala, we see folks who are young at heart, but their bodies are giving them a tough time. Our goal for every guest we serve is to bring them to their highest level of independence. Come visit 